Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Two years ago, I released a video demonstrating how to monitor the Earth's axis of rotation using a simple camera and tripod. Tonight, I'm going to be covering some of that material again, but also demonstrating how to monitor the position of celestial objects like the Sun using the same technique. The picture you see here is, of course, a star trail photo taken using an 80mm refractor and a Canon XTI SLR. The drive off my telescope was turned off, and the camera was simply left to expose for several minutes, producing star trails around the North Celestial Pole, our planet's axis of rotation projected out onto the sky. The bright star you see in the image is Polaris, the North Star, and as you can see, it's not precisely at the North Celestial Pole. At this magnification, we can actually see the separation of Polaris from the North Celestial Pole quite easily, and measure its distance from that point. The green circle is centered on the predicted position of the North Celestial Pole, and its radius is set to be equal to the predicted angular separation of Polaris from the North Celestial Pole. And as we can see, it matches with reality. It's concentric with the star trails, and it passes right through Polaris in the image. Here is the spreadsheet I created to do these calculations. It converts equatorial coordinates to altitude azimuth coordinates, and it can also convert those altitude azimuth coordinates back to equatorial coordinates, both at the equinox of date and at J2000. In other words, it also calculates for precession. J2000 is a standard epoch, which coordinates are frequently referenced to, and certain programs like SAO Image DS9 will use J2000 coordinates if they don't know the date at which the picture was taken. Equinox of date is basically where precession currently is right now, and it shows the current level of precession, which we need to know in order to find where Polaris should be relative to the North Celestial Pole at the date that the picture was taken. All of the spreadsheets that you see me use in this video will be available as links in the video description. Moving along, here's a picture of Polaris and the North Celestial Pole that I took last month using my Canon T5i mounted on the same 80mm refractor riding piggyback on my telescope with the drive turned off. Once again, I've entered the predicted position of the North Celestial Pole and the predicted distance of Polaris from the North Celestial Pole to generate this green circle, and you can see that once again it is concentric with the star trails and it passes directly through Polaris indicating that things are still where they should be. Here once again are the results of my spreadsheet, this time calculating the predicted position of the North Celestial Pole during the time the picture was taken last month, as well as the angular separation of Polaris from the North Celestial Pole at that time. Now if we take the position of the North Celestial Pole from the image in 2012 and use that to generate a new overlay in the image from last month, we can see how far the North Celestial Pole has moved in the last six years due to precession. We can also see that the red circle, showing where the North Celestial Pole was six years ago, is not exactly concentric with current star trails. And of course, it also does not pass through Polaris. All in all, this shows us that precession is measurable using amateur equipment, but things are still right where they're predicted to be according to equations that have been published in books for decades now. Now that we've established that Earth's axis of rotation projected out onto the sky is where it should be relative to the stars, we can use the same technique to find out if other celestial objects are where they're predicted to be. Five years ago, I also published a spreadsheet for predicting the position of the Sun using equations that date back to Simon Newcomb in the 19th century, and we can use those equations to find out if the Sun is still where it should be in the sky. Summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere is just a couple weeks away. And due to ignorance about what causes the seasons, some people think the sun is currently rising and setting too far north. But we can use these equations to find out if that's really the case. So, using this technique, what we can do is first take a picture of the sun, be sure to use a safe solar filter, and then wait a few hours, leave the camera on its tripod, completely unmoved, and then, once it's dark enough to see the stars, take a second picture and layer the two together, as shown here. Also, be sure to record the exact time each picture was taken. You'll need to know that information in order to correctly calculate the altitude and azimuth of the Sun. Once you have the images layered together like this, you need to astrometrically solve the image. I use astrometry.net to do this automatically. Once you have the astrometrically solved image, you can figure out the exact altitude and azimuth of the Sun in the image. Of course, you need to know the exact time that each picture was taken, 
first to find the predicted altitude and azimuth of the Sun at the time that the solar picture was taken, and then to find the altitude and azimuth that its current position in the image corresponds to in the picture taken of the stars. Because of course the astrometry will reflect the coordinates at the time that you took the picture of the stars. Moving on, here is the predicted altitude and azimuth of the Sun, and its predicted apparent angular size at the time that the picture of the Sun was taken earlier this evening. I've set the atmospheric pressure to zero in this spreadsheet because in my altitude and azimuth coordinates converter I'm using geometric altitude and azimuth for that spreadsheet. This is acceptable because the position of the Sun in this solar image is the exact same position we're measuring in the picture of the stars. So now all we have to do is take the predicted geometric altitude and azimuth of the Sun and plug it into our altitude and azimuth converter spreadsheet along with the time that the picture of the stars was taken. This will give us the equatorial coordinates at J2000, which we can then plug into SAO image DS9 to find out where the Sun's predicted position would be in that picture of the star. Plugging the Sun's predicted image from our spreadsheet into SAO image DS9 we find that it generates a circle that coincides with the Sun's actual position in the layered image. This tells us that the Sun is, of course, right where it should be, according to equations that date back to the 19th century. So, to sum it all up, we can safely say that the Earth's axis of rotation is pointed right where it should be, to a resolution better than 2020 vision. Now, of course, this isn't accounting for things like minor tilts due to things like earthquakes, and Chandler wobble, but those are all sub-arc second effects, much smaller than what I could even see with that 80mm refractor, let alone by eye. Likewise, the Sun is right where it should be, once again to a resolution better than anything you can see by eye. The thing I love the most about this is how incredibly accessible it is. All it takes is a standard SLR camera and a tripod. And if you happen to have a small telescope like an 80mm refractor, you don't even need the kind of fancy tracking that I have. You don't need a clock drive or any tracking at all. All it takes is a sturdy mount pointed at the sky to do these kinds of measurements. So of course, feel free to try this at home and verify my results for yourself. All the software I've used is freely available, and I'll include the links to the spreadsheets in the video description. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.